Hello everyone, welcome back to SFDC Ninja. So guys, as you all know, a test class is one of the important part of sales force development, especially for freshers. That's why I started this series. And throughout this series, my objective is to simplify the understanding of test classes. This is the first video of Apex test class series. And in the upcoming videos, we'll be focusing on writing test class for various Apex classes and triggers. So without any further delay, let's start with first episode. In today's video, we are going to understand the basics of Apex test class with an example. We are going to learn many things like what is a test class, why we need it, what to test in Apex, and what are the best practices of writing test class. So let's start with first question. What is a test class? Let's understand by its definition. So a test class is a class which is used to test the functionality of a trigger or an Apex class. That whether the code is working right and doing what it is supposed to do. Let's take an example. Let's say you are writing code to calculate the total cost of item in a shopping cart. Now you want to make sure that the calculation is accurate and the code does not have any mistakes. So for that what you can do, you can create an apex test class and in your code you will add different items to the cart and then you will check if the total cost matches what is expected or not. If the test class confirms that the calculation is correct, then you can be confident that your code is ready to be used. So now we know what is a test class. But next question is why there is a need of it. So guys, first point is deployment requirement. Basically, Salesforce requires a minimum of 75 code coverage for each Apex class and triggers before deploying it to production. That's why 75% code coverage is simply a rule set by Salesforce to ensure that your code is properly tested before it goes into the main system that customers use. This way, the chances of errors and problems are minimized. Next point is verification of code functionality. So test class is needed to verify that your Apex code behaves correctly and produces the desired results. Let's say you wrote a code that calculates the total cost of items in an online shopping cart. And to test it, you can create test scenarios in your test class like what if there are three items in your cart each costing $10 or what if one item is of $15 and another is of $20. So you can run these test scenarios through your code to make sure that it calculates the total cost correctly. Next point is regression testing. See, imagine you have a toy with many features and parts and you really enjoy playing with that toy. Now after some time, you might add new parts or features to your toy to make it even better. But the thing is, when you add these new parts or features, then you want to make sure that the old parts still work just as well. Similarly, when you are building a Salesforce application, it evolves over time. You might add new features, you might fix issues or make improvements. However, as you make these changes, there is a risk that the existing part of your code might start behaving differently or stop working. This is where regression testing comes in. Next is code refactoring and maintenance. Let's say you are rearranging your furniture in your house and you want to make sure that moving a chair from one corner to another does not accidentally break something. Similarly, when you are refactoring your code, you want to be sure that your changes do not break anything that was working before. Next is quality assurance. So it is simply a process of making sure that your code is of high quality, means it is free from bugs and unexpected behaviors. So guys, after understanding need of test class, we should understand what to test in Apex. So Salesforce recommends that you should write tests for these points. First is single action, means you should write tests to verify that a single record produces the expected and correct result. Imagine you have a button that sends an email. So you should test a single action. I mean checking if clicking that button sends the email to an individual. Next point is bulk actions. So in real world scenarios, sometimes action involves multiple records. Bulk action refers to testing that your Apex code works correctly when dealing with a bunch of records. So like previous example, if that email button is used to send email for multiple records, you have to make sure that the code handles it properly. Next point is positive behavior. So it checks that everything goes right when users follow the expected path. For example, if your code involves creating an account, you should test that if it is created properly when user provides all the necessary information. Next is negative behavior. So negative behavior testing explores what happens when things go wrong or when users do not follow the expected path. For example, if your code prevent adding a future date, then in that case, you should test if the code correctly stops user from doing that and shows the appropriate error message. And the last mode is restricted user. Why say all users might not have the full access to all parts of your Salesforce environment. So it is important to test that whether a user with restricted access to the Salesforce objects that are used in your code 
so is the expected behavior or not i mean whether they can run the code or receive error messages so i think we have been discussing theory part for quite a long time now let's start the coding part first let's understand the syntax of test class so in order to convert an apex class into a test class we just need to use at the rate is test annotation before the class declaration and that class will automatically become a test class similarly to make a method a test method we just need to use the same at the rate is test annotation before its declaration we can also use test method keyword to make a test method but salesforce recommends to use at the rate is test annotation because in future release test method keyword may not be there and there is another important point that all test methods must be declared as static now you guys must be thinking why so the answer to this why is when you run your apex test test methods present in your test class needs to be executed whether they are called or not that's why we make them static so that they can run while the class executes because you all know that a static method does not require an instance of the class in order to run now let's see a basic example for better understanding of test class so for today's test class we will create a simple apex class for doing math operations so let's create our class let's say math operations class and in this class we will create two methods one for addition and second for subtraction so let's create first method public static integer let's say add numbers and we will pass two parameters in this method let's say num1 and num2 and this method will return the sum of these two numbers return num1 plus num2 similarly let's create second method for subtraction for subtraction and this is for addition public static integer subtract numbers integer num1 num2 num1 minus num2 save it so our apex class is ready now we will create its test class let's name it test math operation class and to make this class a test class what we will do we will just have to use at the rate is test annotation here now this class is a test class guys see in our apex class we have two methods therefore we will create test method for each so first let's create test method for add numbers method like this public static void test add numbers and to make this method a test method we will simply put at the rate is test annotation before its declaration now inside this test method what we will do we will simply call our apex class method and we will pass values in parameter and then we will verify results using system dot assert equals also this method will return result of integer data type therefore in a test class what we will do we will store that result in an integer variable so let's create a variable like this call our apex class method dot method name and in parameters we will pass two numbers let's say 5 and 3 so this result variable will have value 8 now it is a good practice to use system dot assert equals in test class so let's use it system dot assert equals 8 result basically system dot assert equals checks that the specified condition is true or not see i have a code that is calculating sum of two numbers now i want to make sure that it is giving correct answer so in order to check that we need a way to check if the returning result is what we expect or not that's where system dot assert equals comes into picture basically it accepts three parameters first parameter is specify the result that is expected second parameter is specify the actual result i mean the result we are getting and third parameter is the message that will be displayed if the assert equals results in false in our code it is the parameter 
which specify the expected result. Second one is the actual result. Also, the first and second parameters are mandatory, but the third parameter is optional. That's why we are not using it here. Similarly, create another test method for subtraction method and the rate is test public static void test subtract numbers. Copy these two lines, paste it here. Copy its name, paste it here. Expected result is 2. Save it. And let's run it. So guys, as you can see that our class has passed and also the coverage is 100%. Now let's change the first parameter value and see what will happen. Let's say it will give 88. Save it. Click on run test. So our class has failed. And we are getting this error stating that expected result is different from actual result. So this method helps to double check the results. This is very basic program but in upcoming videos we will write test class for some complex FX classes. Guys in test class also there are some best practices which every developer should keep in mind. Also I will explain these points more clearly in upcoming videos. So let's start with first point which is we should always use assert statement for every test method. Second is we should always avoid hard coding IDs in our code whether it is our FX class or test class. Next point is we should always use test.startTest and test.stopTest method. Basically start test gives a new set of governor limits and stop test then allow to return to previous governor limits. Next point is we should always use see old data equals to false. This annotation is used to open up data access to records in your organization. But we should always try to avoid it because if you are using it then your test class depend on your sandbox data and you might get issues while deployment. Next point is we should always use system.run as method. So guys generally all Apex code runs in system mode where the permissions and record sharing of the current user are not taken into account. But this method enable you to write the test methods that change the user context to an existing user or a new user so that the user's record sharing is enforced. Next is we should always try to use at the rate test setter to create test record once and use it in every test method in test class. So that's it for today guys and I'll be back with more interesting videos on Apex test classes. Till then keep watching and keep supporting. Thank you.